But okay, now that we were able to talk about, show off, and enjoy our brand new peripheral sponsor, Rawcat, here on stream. Um, we love them. So glad to be part of the family. Very excited to do awesome things together. Uh, definitely enjoying the products they've sent so far. They are tremendous. Uh, let us take a look at my in-game gear a little bit and give you guys an update on my uh, my Rend character now. So, basically what we did was we leveled through the very beginning of the game all the way up to the very end of World Tier 3 with my Thorns and Bleed build, which you can find on Mobilitics, our sponsor for all D4 builds and info, um, and the place where I will have my builds updated. Next one up on the list is this one. So, that build was there. It was fantastic. Loved it. I think I do need to make sure that we update the Mobilitics link to have all of my, like, level, you know, up to level 58 is what it was, basically, before we respec. Uh, and then, spoiler alert, took on uh, World Tier 3 Capstone Dungeon. Smoked it. And now we've been having fun in World Tier 4. Um, what we got going on right now, though, is a little bit of a different build. So, we basically dropped all the thorns out of it and decided to go heavier into bleed because I, I was doing the, the Nightmare Dungeons and I felt like bleed wasn't doing as much work and what we needed to do more was uh, thorns. Wait, no, sorry, was bleed. You're throwing me off. It's not a VOD. If, if it says it's a VOD in the top, it's a VOD. But if it doesn't say that, it's not. So that's that's the easiest way to know. And the mouse reason right now is a code. I'm going to try not to answer too many chat questions so we can make sure we get through the, the build video real quick. If you guys it, just hang in there because we got a lot to talk about today. And then if it, then we get to game. So the... the, the the quicker we get through this, the quicker we get to game. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So, we are we are pretty much going all in on, on bleed now, which is roasting. Uh, bleed is exceptional at killing elite mobs and strong monsters like that. It shreds them. Um, and before I forget, what I'm going to talk about, is the first things first is the expertise, because I think I didn't mention the expertise last time. Uh, Whirlwind build is not dead. It's anything but dead. I think Whirlwind build is probably still actually the best um, It's like probably the fastest clearer. However, I have found that a lot of like my build up till now has been like bleed focused as like my main source of single target damage which Has continued to be really really good into the end game So I don't think Whirlwind is bad. I think Whirlwind is probably still the best But I think that I think that bleed is actually really good for pushing content because it allows you to kill like the strongest monsters Which are usually gonna be the biggest problem, right? But once you get your character strong enough to just kill everything fast, Whirlwind's probably the fastest and might be the best, but... Sometimes it's just fun to have fun, too. Guys, I'm seeing those subs pop up. Thank you guys so much for that. We are currently running that promotion where, one, you get drops just for tuning into the stream. And two, if you give two subs to the stream, and you can do that by clicking the subscribe button and then electing to gift subs, and gifting two individual subs, you do get a mount in game that looks like this. Let me show you. Pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. He's got like those like neat markings on him and stuff. And then of course you can add armor to him and stuff. I, I don't have a lot of armor on him so you can actually show it off. But yeah, he looks pretty awesome. Anyway. Anyway. Um, what we have here is I'd recommend using, if you're using, a, if you're not using a two-handed axe as your main weapon, then use the axe expertise for increased vulnerable damage and increased critical strike chance against vulnerable enemies. Insane. Insane, insane. That code gets sent to your Twitch notifications, and then um, you redeem that code through Bina. And you can definitely make a support bar, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, where it's just a bunch of shouts and, and like utility and stuff. Um, so, if you're not, if you are using an axe, then you should be using uh, two-handed sword expertise, where you get uh, a little bit of bleeding and then extra bleed, ex like or extra damage uh, to bleeding after killing an enemy. So, that would be your expertise. Let's look at the abilities. All right, the abilities that I'm using for this particular build have changed a little bit. So, this is this is going to be a little different than what we were doing before. Remember, we're, mo we're moving out of the thorns, moving into the bleed. Okay, Zev, Slim, thanks for the subs, guys. So your your expertise applies to everything. Yeah. So these bonuses apply to only what you're using. It just lets you know what they are. But you can pick one that applies to everything. So if you're using a sword, use axe technique. If you're using an axe, use sword technique. Two-handed sword, two-handed axe. Okay? I see you guys getting that hype train going. You guys are crazy, by the way. 
So, I'm still using Flay. The reason why is because I love the chance to make them vulnerable. It's a 20% chance to make them vulnerable for two seconds. I'm using a two-handed weapon. Which is wild. Vulnerability is great. We're scaling vulnerability like crazy. And we've got this right here. Where, if my game can hang in there. Uh, battle Flay. So we're not doing the other Flay. We're doing this one. Where Flay, direct, uh, dealing direct damage, makes them take 10% increased bleeding damage from you for the next three seconds. So it's just straight increased bleed damage. And usually against the boss, like against packs now, you're gonna be like chh, 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 just slicing through everything. But with, with battle flay against the boss, you're usually gonna have to attack a little bit. And or against just strong monsters, you have to flay them a little bit. So making it deal increased bleed damage during that time is awesome because all your damage is pretty much bleed damage anyway. You guys are crushing it with the subs by the way. Thank you guys so much once again. Absolutely popping off. Cannot believe it. We're starting our day too. So my my rend is rank nine, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, we've got a lot of rend in there right now. I think there's got to be there's like a plus one rend on my build somewhere. But then we also have plus uh, plus three or to rend on my gloves, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but yeah, we maxed out rend, so it's doing giga damage, and we're having it deal you know dealing direct damage with rend extends the duration of vulnerable right. So we have a lot of vulnerability as it is, and now we're extending that vulnerability even more, which is very, very nice. Um, then, instead of using uh, Rend deals increased damage to vulnerable enemies, what I've actually started doing is using direct damage with Rend grants four fury per enemy hit up to a maximum of 20 fury, right? So there's two things that like every character has to have in Diablo. One, you have to have a way of making enemies vulnerable, and two, you have to make have a way of making yourself reliably fortified and fortification is a mechanic where you're when you're fortified which is like this red like film over your hp bar go it goes up whenever your fortify is higher than your hp you become fortified and you gain a percent damage reduction and you can scale that percent damage reduction and i'll show you a little bit more about how we're doing that but anyway one of the things i need to solve in my build was fury generation and so i've done that with a variety of changing some aspects and things like this. So when I'm fighting a bunch of mobs, I can just chop with Rend over and over and over, and it, and it clears them out pretty good. This is still better single target damage. So if you're fighting like a raid boss or something like that, you still might want to take this. This extra 12% damage is pretty huge. Um, but I think dealing damage with Rend granting four fury per enemy hit is actually a pretty big deal for doing dungeons and stuff. But I could go back to this one and experiment if I'm really like fighting only strong monsters and just being like a strong monster killer, that could be it. Um, but anyway. We're also going down here and investing really heavily into Rallying Cry. Now, the shout bonus could... I, I could put extra points in... Like, I could take a couple points out of this. Like, I could do, like, 52%, and then I could I could try to buff up our defense shout or something like that, which might be worth. Oh, Mindy, uh, the drops are going on these days, so that's the big pumps. Yeah. Very exciting times. Very exciting. But what we have is Rallying Cry which is granting us a bunch of extra fury generation. Thank you, Quillen, for the raid, bro. Um, then you have enhanced rallying cry, which makes you unstoppable, which is usual. But what we used to do was get, was do fortify. Um, but now what we're doing is using rallying cry to generate fury instantly and give me additional resource generation. And right now we have a couple different sources of resource generation. And I think they all get scaled by that. So every time I chop mobs, it gives me five rage instead of four and every time I'm generating rage with by having my shouts up instead of three rage it's gonna give me like you know maybe like you know 3.5 something like that right yeah the drop the drops definitely pump things up quite a bit it's uh it's pretty awesome yeah very grateful to have you guys here far too kind yeah and we do leave uh, the stream rolling four drops and so you guys can get your uh, two gifted sub mount even while we're taking a break to you know hang out with the family or exercise or sleep yeah indeed yeah it's so confusing, the, the two different styles of chat, though. You're excited, and then you're very rude, so I'm confused. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> All good. Uh, we have Challenging Shout, which uh, gives us huge damage reduction, which is awesome. We love the damage reduction. Uh, but it also gives us more HP, and I also swap this over. So, while Challenging Shout is active, you gain 3 Fury each time you take damage. Instead of 
doing what this used to do, which is give you thorns, right? So we're taking the thorns out, and we're adding in uh, Fury Gain. So the thorns came out of these two, right? We used to have talent for these two. We took those out, and we put a bunch of points into Rallying Cry. If, if I start to find that my Rage Generation is fine, uh, then what I could do is I could take all the points out of Rallying Cry, and I could put them into Challenging Shot. Like, if we're dying a lot or something like that, we could. Drop Progress does work. Yeah, it does. Indeed. Um, and then we go over here. We have Warcry still. Warcry generates Berserk. And it does also still give me Fortify. I'm still using this as Fortify. Just for like a little extra Fortify. Um, but what we could do, we could do this. Your damage bonus is increased. Yeah, well, well, I think I'm just going to do this. I think my Fortify might be enough as long as I just sit there and attack a mob for a second. I think that's the idea. So, how it works with the VODs is if it says up in the top of the screen, the VOD replay, it's a VOD. If it doesn't, then it's not. That's, that's the easiest way to tell. You just gotta look at it on stream. Or on screen. And thank you once again for all those subbies, guys. We're, we're, we're going over my Rend build right now, so I'm trying to, trying to make sure we can get the information to the homies. But we are doing this on stream during another very, very uh, hype stream start for the day. Nearly a thousand subs for the day already, which is just absurd. You guys are out of control, and I really appreciate all the support. But, that's what we'll do now with this one. We're actually switching it over to take out the Fortify, and we're doing just more damage if we, if we have a bunch of extra enemies around, which is awesome. Because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to use your shouts with as many enemies around you as possible to reduce the cooldowns of them, and I'll show you how that works too. So, my shout skill duration is longer. This helps us have shout uptime, obviously, and it also gives me a little bit of healing, which is nice. Um, this could be a kind of a cool talent to make enemies deal less damage if we needed to, but we have not invested in that yet. There are a couple, pl a couple of places where we can move talent points around. We can take them out of Rallying Cry, we can move it into, into Challenging Shot, or we can move it into, um, Guttural Yell. Because Guttural Yell does seem pretty good, because it would add more damage reduction than extra points in Challenging Shot would. And I don't think that giving more points to Challenging Shot actually increases the, the duration or anything. Hold on, we gotta, we gotta turn this on for a second. We gotta get just a little power flow from Big Mikey. Let's go, bro. The Super Saiyan God Ascension mid guide video. Let's go, baby. The hype will not be contained. <laughs> the hype will not be contained. Thank you so much, bro. I'm loving this game. It is just way too much fun. Having such a great time streaming it every day, and of course, pumping out the YouTube videos for you guys as well. Just way too much fun. Thank you, bro, for the hype, dude. Lordy, lordy. But yeah, I think this might actually be more worth it. It's only five seconds of damage reduction, whereas this is 7.4. But th this is on every shout, I think. So that's something to consider. That's a that's a very interesting combo, is taking points from here if a rage generation is good enough, and go down here. But this is also helpful for generating that fortify. So anyway, let's not let's not theory craft too hard. Let's just show what I'm working with here. Um, down here, we're going for Pit Fighter for increased damage to close, reduced damage uh, from ranged. We're doing 9% increased critical strike chance against things that are slowed and whatever else, but they're always slowed because of our talent point down here. Um, and then dealing direct damage with the weapon mastery skill causes uh, the next core skill to make enemies vulnerable, which is Steel Grasp, which is ranked up a lot due to my item that I'll show you in a second. Uh, Steel Grasp uh, does make enemies vulnerable and does, does still make us go berserk. We haven't changed this at all. Like, a lot of this is still the same. Uh, but this is very valuable, because we Chain Grasp, makes the enemies vulnerable, we go Berserk, we hit them with a Rend, and we they continue to be vulnerable for that much longer. Which is wild. Just insane. Um, so Hamstring, your bleeding affects slow enemies, everybody's bleeding all the time. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and of course my bleeding effects deal 80% increased damage to vulnerable enemies, we're keeping things vulnerable quite a bit. Um, some of the extra talent points that we got from taking out Thorns, we've moved into two-handed weapons, uh, or attacks with two and weapons deal 15% increased critical strike damage. Um, there's a very reasonable thing, a chance that I should actually stop using my one-handers for flay and just use this, just so that the flay, when it crits, deals increased critical strike damage. But flay damage is kind of like negligible, and I don't, but I, the only reason is I just don't have any weapon swap things. Uh, so I could put flay on my two-hander again, which could actually be kind of fun. Maybe I, maybe I will do that. And by the way, how you, uh, do that is you pick your weapon and you cycle through it right on your skills menu so I'm just gonna put on my two-hander again because I think that'll actually be fine if it, if it crits it'll do 50% more damage and I don't really have any benefit for weapon swapping right now but if I did then I'd put it back to the other thing um, and then the final talent is gushing wounds this one's so this one's so sick and it only gets better as I as I progress my character and I get more crit chance 
we have all these different things that cause like extra crit chance to bleeding enemies and things like or slowed enemies, and it all stacks up. So I probably have like 30 to 50 percent crit chance maybe right now, which is wild because what happens is your individual bleed ticks do not crit, but when you apply that big swoosh, slashing rend, the entire bleed stack that it applies can be can crit. And that scales with your critical strike damage bonus. So basically, your bleed stacks can crit, which is wild. Um, that's where my talent points are looking. I think if I was going to move things around, all that would really happen is I would take points out of Rallying Cry, and I would either shift it to Challenging Shout, or I would shift it to Guttural Yell. Everything else, I think I'm going to leave where it is for now. But that's looking pretty good. Um, now that we're, you know, leveled up a little bit, we have Paragon now, which is very cool. So what I started with, with Paragon, is I took this path through the physical damage and did not take this we, if this is looks pretty cool but we went for the physical damage we went up this way we locked in uh marshall which is after casting a shout skill the active cooldown of every other shout skill is reduced by 1.2 seconds this kind of helps mitigate some of the uh shout cooldown increase that happens but in order to get that i had to get a lot of strength in the radius so i had to get both of these rare nodes and level it on up but these things are this is a very cool system this paragon thing and for my first Paragon, I did pick the Hemorrhage, where enemies that have been affected by my bleeds for more than 3 seconds take 12% increased damage from me. This is pretty cool. It's kind of just on the way, though. It's not, like, insane insane, because we also have these physical damage over time nodes. And I think I want to grab more of those as we make our way to another Glyph slot Socket, and then probably either go over here and down, or just go up here which probably is what I'm going to do, and go up to the next uh, slot after that. And after this next one, I'm not sure what I'm going to pick for this next one. Uh, Blood Rage does seem pretty cool. Killing a bleeding enemy has a chance to give Berserk, but the other one that I liked was... Was that the one I liked? Warbringer is extremely popular for Barbarians. It might just be Warbringer for the utility. That might be the one. Yeah. But while Berserk and Critical Strikes increase your attack speed also seems insane. Like, those two synergize, I feel. Right? It's kind of a long game upgrade system, but that'd be cool. But I think, uh, I still think that Warbringer is probably the best one, but I'm not going to get into that quite yet because that's we're just not there yet. Um, I know that we're talking about this a lot, but let's do one more thing. Let's talk about my gear. So, my gear and my build, like, the talents I think are pretty static, but here's where things shift a lot, okay? The Paragon Path, I think I'm pretty, like, it doesn't really change that much. Like, you, have, you path to your stuff. Um, th this is where things change like crazy, um, is in the gear and the aspects. This changes a lot, because I just find, I, I find stuff and I use it, right? So this is where things are going to change the most. I, I can tell you kind of what I got and what I'm kind of looking for. Your primary damage source with this is now pretty much all bleed. We're, we've, we've sort of gotten to the tier 4, and once we get to tier 4, I'm dropping the thorns out and going pretty much full bleed if you're just joining us. Um, so here's what we got. Uh, we've got life... Armor, resistances, basic skill attack speed. This actual helm item is not that great. But what it has is, uh, it's a sacred legendary, so it's, you know, a juicy item. Um, and it gives me a barrier. That barrier is a pretty juicy barrier, and it can happen every 30 seconds. And it's just, I don't know, that barrier is nice, and this is just the best helmet I've got. We're looking for another one. So, things that we're looking for on helmet, and once again, you can refer to my mobilitics guide for this. Um, if you guys uh, have the overlay... You can look at my build and notice that what we're looking for is, like, uh, sources of CDR are huge. And I, I believe that the helmet is probably one of the only pieces that can actually give you uh, cooldown reduction. So we're looking for cooldown reduction on this thing. Uh, we, don't, we haven't found it yet. But that's what we're looking for. Um, ideally. And uh, the barrier is good. I think there's another one where when you generate fury, you, you above cap, you generate a barrier. Or there's some sort of barrier generation legendary. I want that one. I think it's more reliable than this one. Um, but that one's good too. Um, this is a, a unique chess piece that I think you will find early on. It seems like, to me, there are certain uniques that start to drop at a certain level. And this is one of them. Uh, like, I think a lot of times you're going to find the ruptured two-headed sword, and then you're going to find this chess piece. But it's a good chess piece. Gives plus physical damage, gives plus critical strike chance um, against elites. It gives damage reduction to enemies that are bleeding, which is everything for me. It, it gives me thorns, which is like, I don't really want thorns now, but it's whatever. But it does give me up to a 34% chance to reduce the cooldowns of my non-ultimate skills, like shouts, uh, by 1.5 seconds when you inflict, inflict bleeding on enemies on a lucky hit. So that's pretty big. 
You'll also notice that I changed my gems to blue gems now for damage reduction while fortified instead of thorns. Uh, these gloves, they're okay. They give me four ranks to rend though, which is kind of nuts. That's pretty cool. We like the plus four ranks to rend. Uh, it gives me crit chance, it gives me damage over time. Unfortunately, it gives me overpower damage. I'm not a big fan of overpower damage on this build. What I'm looking for more is just like, just reliable bleed damage and things like that, so. But we had to reroll the uh, crit strike, because uh, I think it was like int or something weird like that. You can only reroll one stat, and then you can only reroll that stat afterwards. But rerolls are kind of expensive. Yeah. Overpower feels like Druid. Overpower is really good for Hammer of the Ancients. Thorns is like a damage reflect. Whenever something hits you, they take your Thorns damage back to them. It's good for leveling, but I think it falls off if you don't fully invest in it. But I went the, the bleed way instead of... If, if you fully invest in Thorns, you could do that too, but I decided to go bleed. Um, but what this one does is it uh, deals increased damage three seconds, you stand still. So while you're just sitting there going whoosh, 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 rending and, and flaying, um, you do more damage. So, it's cool. All Shouts and Whirlwind, that's, a, that's probably the best build. It's probably the fastest build. This one, I think, does pretty big damage. Thank you, Heresy, for the reset, bro. Um, these pants... All my gear is about to be replaced anyway. Like, it's, if we're gonna look, look for Ancestrals now that we're in World Tier 4. But we have Berserking Duration, we have War Cry bonus, we have Max Life, we have Damage Reduction from Distant Enemies, so... Nothing really great coming from this chest piece. The stats that we're looking for on chest piece are... Really more like damage percent, damage... Or sorry, not chest piece. But the things that, that we have from chest piece are actually alright. Damage, damage reduction from close would be better. And just damage reduction, so the chest piece is okay. But legs, we're looking for like damage reduction would be nice. Which we don't really have much of. Guys, thanks for those resubs. Uh, Barb's feeling insane. I love it. I, every second of it, I love it. Um, but a big thing that it does have is a max rolled. Um, you gain a certain percentage of increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage. So when you when you like rend one group of mobs, there's like a million bleeds that are proccing, and so you fill this up really quickly, which is excellent. Um, I'm actually using something kind of weird for my boots. The boots are nice. They're like movement speed. They have resistance, and they have fury cost reduction. So CDR, cooldown reduction, and fury cost reduction are like super ultra good stats for Barbarian. Those are things that I'm looking for a lot um, on all my gear if I can get it. But I think CDR only rolls on certain things. Um, you really would like to see movement speed on boots, which we do have. Um, so that works. But yeah, the, these, are, these are okay. But with, one of the weird things is that they have this weapon mastery skill as an additional charge. And you're like, weapon mastery? That's so odd. But wait till I get to my two-hander, then you'll understand. <laughs> weapon Mastery is my chain, though. So Chain Hook does another charge, which is fine. And my Weapon Mastery skills have a chance to stun enemies, which is fine. That's cool. Um, when do you get the mount? So, like, in-game, in uh, beginning of Act 4. Um, I'm, I'm kind of recording, like, a quick uh, character update right now, but you'll notice that if you're on stream, you guys come ask questions anytime. We'll, we'll, we, we got you. It's so much fun to play this game, answer questions for you guys, help you learn, because I'm new, too. But we're all learning together, and that's a really fun time. So, for this weapon, it's more of a stat stick than anything, so the whole, like, weapon damage part isn't that important. What's important is these things right here, the actual stats and stuff, so... Overpower damage, not big for me, but what it does have is... Vulnerable damage and damage over time, a huge amount of strength, and a whole bunch of all stats. So it's kind of a really beefy weapon. Mobile Linux page is dope? Yeah! Yeah, the Bleed and Thorns build, use at the level. It's a really fun leveler, and it takes you all the way up to World Tier 4, basically, and then at World Tier 4... Or right before it, to get to World Tier 4, I respect into this, uh, this, uh, rend heavy build. So that's what we're doing now, is we're switching into, like, committing to one thing over another, right? Even though I think Rend Thorns was great, le uh, leveling up, it was a good combo. But, uh, so this one has skills deal up to 40% increased damage based on your primary resource when cast, so you kind of charge up to a full rend bar and whoosh, hit a big, nasty rend on, like, everybody, it's really nice. Yeah, Wolvie. So type exclamation mark build. That'll give you a link to my uh, Mobilitics page with my leveling build on there. And then it'll also give you a video at the bottom that's like a walkthrough of the guide. Like a video walkthrough. Yeah. Rupture, uh, I don't like the playstyle of it quite as much, but it is fine to use. And then of course I have it socketed with two damage over time gems. Um, these weapons... Looking for things like, you know, damage over time, damage to bleeding, all stats is fine, core skills. This is a very excellent item. I, I do like this one a lot. It's got a lot of things I'm looking for. The all stats could be something different, but it's fine. As I've, as I've gotten more gains on my character, I've used my basic skills less to generate rage. So I may think about re-rolling that basic skill gain to something else more useful. We will see. 
Aspect of expect it to give you more damage for Ren? I'll have to look for that one. I will. Yep. Where have I been all this time? Oh man, we've been streaming, making content for years and years. I'm glad that you finally found us though. Welcome aboard. Been doing it for years and plan on doing it for years. It's a dream come true. I love it. And especially when you get to do it with such a fun game like this, with everybody's all excited and all. It's just such good vibes. Nothing like it. Welcome, welcome. Come on, hang out. Our stream is going to be live pretty much 40, like, you know, for 24 hours a day during the during this, during the drops. I, I will be streaming my normal, like, you know, my normal 10 hours a day probably. But then the times that we're not streaming, we will leave the VOD up for you guys so you can continue to get your drops, um, continue to get your two gifted sub mounts, and catch up on any content you may have missed. So, this build is really fun. It's not as fast as spin to win, but it's fun. Yeah, I, I, I did show my Paragon board. I can show it to you again in a minute, though. Let's try to get through the gear just a teeny bit. Thank you guys so much for them subs, by the way. Um, so this one has all stats, damage over time, damage while berserking, which is like conditional, but it's whatever, and damage to bleeding. So it's got some good stuff. This one makes an attacking enemies with a basic skill increase the damage of your next core skill uh, by 9%. It'd be, it'd be lovely if it was like 10%, so you could just go choo, 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 get the maximum bonus. <laughs> Huge rend. The nerfs didn't really mess with me that much, except for the fact that I am a build that uses three shouts. And so it affects the three, the three shouts builds. But basically what happens is you just have to itemize for your shouts a little bit more. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. Um, so we already talked about Marshall being whenever I use a shout, it bring, it reduces the cooldowns of my other shouts. So what I do generally is just like getting a small shout rotation. So I do my defense shout first, my aggro shout, and then my... Uh, by, by aggro, I mean my, my damage shout and then my rage generation shout. Um, in that order, usually. Because I want, I want that, that um, defensive shout to be up the most. I want the damage reduction shout to be up the most. Um, but maybe resource shout could come after. Could do that too. Um, it'd be, it might be worthwhile if I'm taking hits. But anyway. Um, probably, actually, it probably should be the resource shout next. Because you generate resources while you have your shouts up. So it probably should be challenging shout, uh, rally and cry, war cry in that combo. Anyway. Um, this is very nice. We have cooldown reduction on the, the neck. However, it's, a, it's like a half as good as it could be roll. Uh, but CDR, you can get it on your helmet, and you can get it on your your neck. So you really want to get CDR for the shouts, right? We have damage reduction, another low roll. It is what it is. We have a max roll, two-handed slashing weapons, and fury cost reduction. So it has two things that I really, really like, which is cooldown reduction and fury cost reduction. Some of my favorite stats are like cooldown reduction, fury cost reduction. Crit is insane, but attack speed feels so good. Attack speed feels so good. So I'd like to find more attack speed. But then, of course, you really need the, the actual damage modifiers the most, but we'll figure it out. As I play more, I'll tell you guys what, I, what I've found and what I like. But this is huge. This is very important. The imprint, the aspect, each point of fury generated with a maximum fury gives you fortify. Very important. This is how I'm able to get the fortify off of my shouts and use the shouts for fury generation and for like damage increase because of this. So at the beginning of a dungeon, what I'll do is I'll pop my, I'll pop my fury generator shout. I'll go... Bat, 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 bat. Just flay a mob for a little while. Get my, get my uh, fortify full, and then you just go ham. Then you just go nuts, because you have a lot of fury generation with this setup now, and you're overcapping your fury very comfortably. Um, and so you're getting a lot of fortify just from like attacking stuff, basically. Does watching your stream unlock Diablo gear? Exactly. Yep. Just chill. Yeah. Just chill. Yeah. Whirlwind's great, but I've been enjoying Rend, and I'll, I'll, we'll, I mean, what I'll probably do is eventually I would love to include some gameplay in the guide videos, but the guide videos are already so long because I just yammer constantly about all the min-maxing and theory crafting and how much I love this game. And so it takes a while, so what we'll do is we'll do the guide video, and then I'll have gameplay videos, and of course we're doing hours and hours of gameplay every day here on Twitch, so that will... I will show you some gameplay and we'll see if you think it looks cool. Um, it is going to be slower than Whirlwind in terms of just, you, with Whirlwind you're doing AOE damage constantly and moving while you do it. It's hard to beat that kind of speed and efficiency. But this build feels very, very good. It feels very good to play. And you shred the elites. Like you're not Whirlwinding an elite for a minute waiting for it to die. You, you, you jump on top of it go, wham, wham. It's entire HP bar is consumed by Rend. You just walk away and start killing something else. You hit that like, you go like, oh my, oh And then they just like bleed out while you're like, you know, cool guys walk, you know, don't look at explosions walking away from them. Anyway, um, the next ring <laughs> is crit chance that we've re-rolled onto it. Lucky hit chance, which I don't really love, um, but it is what it is. And then critical strike damage, which is cool, because remember, my crits can, uh, my bleeds can crit now, so scaling crit and crit damage is very good. Nani! Exactly. <laughs> I just cut him in half. Now, 
You most of the mobs die from bleeds, so you don't get the Gragdoll physics, but yesterday I did cut a werewolf clean in half, and it was like the coolest thing I've ever seen in this game. Um, then I have damage to slowed, which is excellent. Uh, because everything is slowed all the time. This is such an essential uh thing. Your shout skills generate fury per second when active. I'm gonna put this in one of the things I wish I knew when I was uh, uh leveling up. There is an aspect that you can get from a dungeon that gives you this. So I think that you have to do a stronghold to get it. And I didn't know that, but yeah, your shout skills generate thing per second. I haven't unlocked it yet, I don't think. Let's see. I pinned it. Is it where is it on the map? Like, did I not just pin it? But anyway, you can go through your codex of power and you can find these things. Pinned. Where is it? Yeah, it's hiding. I haven't I haven't even found it yet, so it was hiding from me. But this is such an essential shout. Such an essential shout. Get this one. You need it, okay? You need this one. So important. I haven't even found it yet. This is why I, I didn't discover it. This is this is a huge wish I knew this when I was leveling up situation right there. Big. So go into your codex, find your resources, show my my class only. Get resource restore one of your primary resources when you CC an enemy. Slows count as a CC. Get this and use these two. Restore a resource when you CC an enemy and shout skills generate fury per second get those do that or get some of these uh resource things whatever you want probably those two get those while you're leveling until you get the uh the shout ring which it has to drop i believe um this shout ring is what i mean by that one is this one right here so anyway get that if you can find it on gear awesome if you can't get it from the dungeon it'll help you a lot with your fury generation fury generation and resource generation is huge for barbarian I imagine it's huge for other classes, but it's so good for Barbarian. This is the ring that got Giga nerfed. Um, whenever you cast a shout skill, its cooldown is reduced by a certain amount per nearby enemy up to a maximum of 6 seconds. So, your shouts are only reduced by 6 seconds. So, that's a bummer, but your shouts are like the determination of whether you can attack an enemy or not. If you, like in these high keys, these high uh, tier dungeons, you only attack stuff when your shouts are up. Because if you, if you attack them when your shouts are not up, you die. So... I still feel like this is mandatory. I still feel like it's mandatory. This one's not in a dungeon. You have to. Get, this one has to drop. I still think it's worth using, but if you didn't get it to drop for you yet, just use another resource generation shout and try that. Because I don't think you... You're not in a situation where you can't attack stuff without your shouts, usually in the campaign. And for a while. But eventually, yes. Um, I, I would recommend you get to the highest world tier you can immediately. Yeah. Um, but anyway... This, this thing has damage to CC to enemies, crit chance, damage to close, damage to vulnerable. Fantastic. That's three huge modifiers with crit strike chance. I mean, this ring is insane. So I had to, I had to put that shout skill on there. I had to do it. Um, and now this weapon. Look at this freaking weapon. We found this yesterday. This ancestral two-handed unique. It does giga dam. It's a big buff to damage for me. Um, it does huge damage to slowed. Huge damage to vulnerable, huge damage while berserking, and five ranks, which is actually a low roll, by the way. A five ranks of steel grasp, so my chain hook. And also, look at what it does. Steel grasp launches two additional chains, so usually it's three, now it's five. It goes whooshing and grabs like the whole freaking screen, pulls them in, has a chance to slow them. Or no, it does slow them by 57%. This is so fun to play with. It's such a cool uh, uh, weapon. Um, but yeah, if it, if it rolled like eight ranks of steel grass, that'd be better. So we'll see. So you, you show the roll by going into your uh, game settings, going to options, going to gameplay, and then showing advanced tooltip compare. And but advanced tooltip information is showing what it can roll. The compare is the things at the bottom that'll show like, you know, if you take the item off, what happens. Um, but yeah, so just to answer that one question just a little bit further, um, my recommendation is play the game however you want. If you're getting distracted by doing every single event and side quest and finding stuff, and you're loving that, and you're at your level 60 in Act 1, World Tier 2, World Tier 1, play your game, have fun. If you want to be a little bit more efficient, my recommendation, because a lot of people are leveling for the first time now because the game like fully came out, my recommendation would be to go into World Tier 1, focus on the campaign, and then do all this exploration stuff in the beginning of World Tier 3. Uh, okay, by the way, so you do the campaign, finish the campaign World Tier 1, 
set it to veteran world tier two go to the the capstone dungeon to get to world tier three okay that's our recommendation and then when you're really really weak in world tier three start farming out your renown in the zones start doing the side quests start doing the strongholds and stuff and then progress your character in world tier three and then when you're strong enough to take on the, the capstone dungeon there do it and then that's where i am right now where we're now in world tier four and we're weak again and now we're going back through and getting the renown four and five ranks but get one two three in like world tier three that's what i recommend anyway these are these are topics for another video we've already been talking about this for 35 minutes but this is my ren build We've already been in here for a long time. If you want to see some gameplay, stay tuned. Plenty more videos of me doing gameplay with this on YouTube. And of course, uh, we're streaming 10 hours a day of Diablo 4 on, on Twitch. Um, if you tune in, you'll either catch me live or you'll be catching a VOD of gameplay. So always be sure to swing by. As long as the drops are live, I think we're going to have the stream rolling. Just because I like to do that for you guys. And of course, it is really fun to be able to, to tune in and chat with you guys even when we're off stream. Which is fun for me too. But anyway, um, Paragon Levels real quick. Just a review are this i'll talk about it more let's let's go ahead and end the video um so we can wrap it up and get it posted to youtube so people can start figuring out uh what to do now that i'm in world tier four and i, I finished world tier three with the bleed setup by the way but now that we're in world tier four this is our progression this is what we're looking at this is how i what i did to get there we're gonna post this build guide up to youtube we're gonna get it put into uh text format for mobilytics and we're gonna keep hammering d4 that's the plan all right, guys, let's get to work. Lots of announcements today, lots of excitement today. Time to finally play the game. Let's do it.